Hi guys, in this video I am going to tell you about how ISS that is International Space Station communicate with Earth. Do they have phone? If yes, what kind of phone do they have? Does ISS have phone number? If yes, what it is? And finally we are going to watch a live talk with an astronaut at International Space Station. Come, let's get started. Unfortunately, it is not possible to call or Skype or WhatsApp ISS. The International Space Station has no phone number in traditional sense. The astronauts have to leave their phones at home. For private calls, the space station has equipped with internet connected phones that works through a computer through which astronaut can call any number on earth. But unfortunately, no phone on earth can call them back. Astronauts also have tablet computers which can be used to send emails. Although some astronauts send tweets from the orbit, these are normally mailed to their communication team on ground who do the posting. If someone needs to call International Space Station, the operators at the Mission Control Center simply relay the audio through a telephone line to Houston into the high frequency space to ground radio network. The phone number at NASA Johnson Space Center is plus one two eight one four eight three zero one two three. But your chances of getting through to the ISS are slim. What are we doing today? We're going to speak to an actual astronaut. Yeah! Station. This is Isidar Piao from uh, the Excel in London. How do you hear me? And uh, London, UK, Elena. Good morning. I hear you loud and clear. Paolo, welcome to London. It's great to have you with us today. Please tell us that's not the actual planet Earth. Uh, we got a problem, Houston. Absolutely no problem. I have a little plastic Earth here flying with me, but uh, but I can tell you that uh, looking at the Earth from the window, the the Earth look magnificent as usual. Paolo, how are you? How is your mission going? And what are you doing today? I can see your schedule on your knee there. So what's planned? Libby, good morning. Uh, Actually, we'll say good afternoon, probably. Um, yes, uh, it's going pretty good. It's, uh, it's been very busy so far. I mean, our schedule is kind of uh, uh, extremely busy. We had uh, a, um, a cargo vessel that we loaded up SpaceX. We loaded up a week ago, and uh, it, was a, it was a murder and putting everything together. It was very interesting, very, very strong. And then, uh, and then now we are preparing for the spacewalks that will take place in the next 10 days. So again, we are very, very busy. And on top of this, we carry out, as usual, our good complement of experiments, science. Uh, we, have, uh, uh, we are growing vegetables. Uh, we have all sorts of things happening up here. It's very, very, very good. Hello. Um, what area of the space station are you in at the moment? And also talk to us about um, your use of technology, your use of robots and your reliance on robots when you're up in the space station. Yes, uh, we, I'm, talking, I'm talking here from the Columbus Laboratory. Space Station is essentially composed of laboratories. Uh, there is a Japanese laboratory, there is a U.S. laboratory, and this is the Columbus, the European laboratory built by the European Space Agency. Uh, we have all sorts of facilities here that allow us to do experiments on the life science, uh, on the um, uh, metallurgy science. I mean, we 
have all sort of things and it's very very it's a little bit chaotic as you can see but it's very very efficient also because we can work in 3d you know we can go up uh, on the on the ceiling here and be working here like a vampire but it makes no difference here on uh, on in space and Paolo, of course you're one of our special guests but i'm sorry to tell you not the most important guest today because we have five competition winners who entered a competition and have won the right to ask you a question so would you please welcome up on stage anushka eleni laura mary and verity okay. what made you take the huge risk of going into space well being an astronaut going to space was uh my dream when uh, when I was a kid and uh, you know dream when you're a kid kind of strange but then when I grew up I realized that well I had the capability the inclination uh, the technical mind uh, and so I I pursued this career and I, it's something that I like it's it's I would say it's my passion and I'm fortunate that I'm able to to do as a job uh, what is my passion and I'm so fortunate and I'm or hoping that in the future will be the same situation for you too. Now, Laura. Laura? Laura. Laura has a great question for you, Paolo, nice and slowly and clearly. Yeah. You first went into space 10 years ago. Can you notice a change in the way Earth looks now? Is it more lit up? Laura, thank you for uh, the question. Uh, yes, I flew just about 10 years ago the first time and it was uh, on the space shuttle on a mission to build the International Space Station. Uh, it was a very short mission and at that time, very short, 15 days was a long mission for the shuttle but a short uh, uh, compared to the six months uh, plus uh, missions that we do these days. Uh, I think uh, uh, we were focusing at that time on technology, on building the station, on going to space and today we are focusing our attention on being in space leaving in space for long duration, having a crew that lives together, including the crew that is on the ground, extremely important to make sure that everything uh, works together. And our focus is actually on science, on technology, on research. Most of our time is now spent on actually working here instead of building this station. Mary's got another question to follow on. It's brilliant. Good afternoon, Paolo. What do you feel would be the most revolutionary change in space exploration in the next 20 years, given the su su superb success of Voyager, Rosetta and the Cassini, mis Cassini missions recently? Well, there are many things that we can do in space that are going to be revolutionary. Uh, we, if, if we think in terms of the sizes of the universe, we understand that we know very little and we really did not go that far out of this planet. It was a very important step to go out of the planet, but now we need to continue our exploration. And this is, uh, of course, through our uh, robots, our satellites, uh, with all the missions far away. But eventually, one of the most important steps will be uh, continuing the exploration and land a human being on Mars and eventually establish a settlement there and understanding what it means living permanently on a planet outside the Earth. I think that would change our mind, would make us understanding a little bit better about the universe and what is around us. Eleni. It is Eleni, isn't it? Yes. Eleni has a question for you now. Eleni. Hi, Paolo. Um, aboard the ISS, what happens to your senses and how does this affect your life on the ISS? Lenny, that's a, a very interesting question. Uh, you know, it takes about five to six weeks uh, to, before you come on, uh, in, on orbit and you understand that you need to behave like an extraterrestrial person and, uh, and you can work in this situation and it's okay nothing is happening it's the same thing and you don't need to work anymore uh, on the local vertical established by the gravity you make your own vertical and that's really really interesting it makes a it makes for a very strong uh, change of mind and of course uh, the senses behave differently this is somehow an artificial place or so smell is kind of different touch is different i think the skin behaves differently the the fluid in the body uh, works differently even 
the internal organs inside us move differently and uh, and these are you know something that um, takes quite some time to get used to it but when you get used to it uh, it's incredible I mean you feel so light you feel like Superman you feel like Spider-Man you want to fly at the end of the module you just fly at the end of the module you want to come back you just push and come back and it's incredible and super and I'm looking forward for everybody to experience this one. Hello, I think you'll agree there are great questions from Anushka, Eleni, Laura, Mary and Verity. Thank you so much for joining us on stage today. Thank you so much. Well done. Well done. Paolo, you see a sunrise every 92 minutes. Do you try and watch every single one? Do you, do you still get blown away by sunrises? Well, yes, sunrises and sunsets are spectacular. Uh, I don't have time to watch uh, every single one. Uh, I usually in the evening after, when I'm supposed to sleep, by the way, I, I just go to the window uh, to our cupola and uh, I get to see at least one sunrise and one sunset. And by the way, these days we have incredible auroras. Uh, in my previous mission, I barely saw a couple. And, and here, every night, every, every, every time it's dark, we have aurora and the North Pole and the South Pole. It's incredible and I just marvel at this earth and, and I'm taking pictures and taking tide lapses and I'm sending down on earth uh, to social media to make everybody uh, be part of of this incredible scenery that is that we can have up here Paolo obviously you miss all your friends and family up there you've got to spend six months in space but what else are you missing from back here on earth Yes, uh, friends, family, uh, very important. Uh, uh, yeah, we are human beings. We are social animals. And, uh, you know, I miss uh, the people around me. Uh, you know, space station, it's a very fast space uh, pace. We start around 7.30 in the morning and we are on duty until like 8 o'clock in the evening. Um, uh, and that's official duty. Then we still are on duty after that. Uh, Saturday and Sundays are there's sometimes a little bit of free time. But but I miss you know being able to relax completely. I I me I miss uh, the food a little bit because here the food is all prepared and and pre pre preconditioned. Uh, I miss going around with people. You know, go out for a pizza. Uh, I miss actually talking to people and talking about space uh, to people. Uh, but all of this is. Uh, it's, I'm looking forward for all of this when I will come back to Earth uh, in a few months. Tell us about your most amazing experience to date in space. Well, I had uh, many, many uh, amazing experiences, to be, to be honest. Uh, I was doing uh, one of the experiments here the other day, and, uh, and I was looking at what was happening inside this uh, experiment, and it was just amazing to look at how things behave completely. I would not have thought that things would behave in that way. Uh, of course, this, uh, this is interesting, incredible. Uh, the view of the Earth is incredible. I already mentioned that we have some spectacular auroras uh, in the evening. And, uh, and, and, and that's it. I mean, it's, it's amazing the fact that we can be here out in space and uh, uh, feel human. Actually, it's, it's very incredible how we feel more human uh, when we are out of the Earth. Uh, and, uh, and we miss Earth when we are out of the Earth. So this is really amazing and good. Paolo, I know we're running out of time and you've got a busy schedule to get back to, but I think everybody here would like just one last demonstration of what it means for you in microgravity. What can you do up there? Wait, we can do a lot of uh, all sorts of strange things, like, uh, you know, float uh, if, if some water, I don't know, uh, it's even difficult to see, you know, float some water and then catch it in midair. So you don't need a glass here in space. You can... You can uh, flip around, I already did. You can do a somersault and not hurt yourself most of the time because you can end up uh, hitting your head if you're not careful. Uh, but the most, the most incredible things is that we can actually work here and the, the science and research that we do here, it's essential in my opinion to further our knowledge. This is the most incredible thing. Yeah, I wish you could see the faces here, young and old, in absolute awe of you. We've got about 20 seconds left. Do you have one last message to us here on planet Earth before you leave us? 
Well, yes, I would like to say that, uh, first of all, planet Earth is, is extremely beautiful, but we see from space how far we have gone as human beings in, uh, in changing it, and we need to be careful on what we are doing to it. And then I would tell to the people there, especially to the young, uh, to the young uh, uh, people there, that they need, you need to look at your passions inside and, and try to make that happen, work for it, uh, because, uh, because this, is, uh, this will bring you to a successful life uh, in the future. And if you allow me, I know that uh, at the Italian Space Agency in Rome, they are also looking at this. I would like to say hello to, to them, to everybody at the Italian Space Agency. Buongiorno, ciao. And, uh, and to everybody, we are looking forward to coming back to Earth and uh, talk to you in person and have more time to share with you this incredible experience uh, of being out, out of the Earth. Thank you for sharing your very special life with us, Paolo. From everyone here in London, to the space station, to, and to yourself, grazie mille, ciao. Give him a big round of applause. Yeah. Thank you, Paolo. Craig Libby from the International Space Station, London, from the International Space Station, thank you for uh, watching us and looking forward to of watching you flying around earth flying around the earth bye bye Ciao. thanks for watching please like share and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell